So this will be the first in a series of videos that I will do daily of inquiries regarding various subjects and the best way I thought of starting with this was to ask myself the question of what should my first video be about and here I am sort of doing the inquiry and I've already done it. This will be the first video that I ever did I think where I have written content so I know what I'm going to talk about and we'll see how it turns out. If it turns out not so good then I'll know to depend more on you know kind of verbal and uh, coming up with stuff to think about and I, if it turns out well then I know I can just rely more on written content. So anyway I started thinking about it and I asked myself what is the first thing that you need to know when you uh, want to ask yourself what video should you make or let's say you want to be a creator which video should you make or you can even extend it to creating a product so which product should I create uh, should I do something intuitive should I do something that's that's new maybe I should go and look what works and then do that so are you the type of person that talks about what is important to you at that moment or are you the type of person that values more what other people want to talk about so imagine you're at a party and there's a lot of guests and there's a group of people is it more important for you that you're gonna talk about everybody I mean is gonna talk about what's interesting to you at that moment or do you look for the main topic in that group at that moment and how you can fit yourself into that topic and from there start the conversation in other words do you go for whatever you care about or do you go for what's popular and I'm not saying like this is good this is bad this is you know this is a more um, virtuous way of being this is less virtuous not at all like it's just different personalities that's all it is and the essence of the question what it focuses on is the distinction or the tension between being a follower and being a creator so it may look like the creator uh, which again is the person that talks about what he wants to talk about what's important to him he creates the product that is he's passionate about he creates the videos that he wants to make it seems like he's always kind of number one he's always ahead but it's actually not true uh, because if you look at a Pareto distribution the creator is way ahead but only like five ten percent of the time ninety percent of the time he's bound to fail this is in contrast with uh, the follower who's actually very likely to succeed because he's going on something that's already successful so let's say that you uh, go into again a social situation you start a conversation but instead of uh, just choosing a new topic not knowing whether people are gonna like it whether they like your delivery whether they'll be invested into the topic you go on a topic that people already talk about for example let's uh, let's talk about politics or again but but even more so like let's not just just talk about politics let's see what other people are talking about regarding politics and let's comment on that in a way that people find good to hear but not um, in any way divisive um, so Harvard calls these distinctions uh, the difference between being an inventor and being an entrepreneur now in terms of advent, uh, advantages to being a follower or an entrepreneur you basically get safety in popularity uh, which means that when you choose what appeals to most people like when you want to make a video and you look at what most people what there's a big niche for already um, you can easily tap into an existing audience and and quickly grow with almost no risk because again people are already succeeding at that venture so you can look at stuff like uh, reaction channels prank channels uh, anti-SGW channels 
uh, there's a huge market for these videos and you don't need to ask yourself what you need to create because again you already see what's working uh, and you can simply tap into that market by doing what works and maybe ha having a bit of variation through your personality so you're kind of a different person so you just naturally do it a bit differently and you can pe you can look at people like uh, Jinx and Leafy who are two people who do pretty much reactions and again many people have done, have done this before but because they do it particularly well, um, or you could say because they're lucky, they built millions of followers uh, in a relatively short time simply by copying what works. Now, uh, there's an interesting side note here, which something I found out is that Thomas Edison, who you know invented the light bulb, uh, the the pataphone, and many other. Um, you know, really, really important inventions. Um, and he's considered like the go-to guy when you talk about inventors. He actually um, is somebody who considers themselves uh, a follower rather than an entrepreneur. Because somebody asked him once, and this was on a Harvard peered paper, somebody asked him uh, what he thinks about his ideas. And he replied that he didn't care about them that the only ideas he would actually cared about were ideas where he could commercialize them. So again, that's a perfect combination between being a creator and being a follower because he on one hand created stuff that didn't exist, but on the other hand, he didn't create just to create, he only created things that he knew other people would like. Um, now, Sony is another good example. Uh, Sony was actually originally uh, founded as a company that that that's agenda was to sell rice cookers so to sell rice cookers commercially on a massive level and that failed horribly and immediately they shifted directions looked at what's currently trending and nowadays they sell playstations tvs cameras so completely different direction um not creating too much of anything new but then again you know having some new stuff but but mostly following trends now, in terms of disadvantages, uh, the biggest disadvantages to following trends are simply the inherent limitations in terms of creativity and, you know, creative engines, agency and depending on the actual trend itself. So these essentially are the problem uh, because you never actually create an audience, okay? There's a, an audience that's already there or that's, you know, being manipulated and changes based on the environment for example right now there's a big audience for anti-trump videos as well as pro-trump videos but once trump thing goes out of the uh, popularity contest let's say for in four years when he stops being president suddenly you don't have an audience anymore because nobody cares about trump anymore or let's say Imagine the case that you want to create something that's not related to Trump. Again, you've the audience that you got, where you've built up your audience by extracting a bigger audience that was the people who are interested in the Trump stuff, maybe they don't want to hear about the other shit that you want to say. So you run the big risk of creating an audience that traps you in very specific interests and then you can't get out of those interests, uh, which again, if you have an artistic, a, a high artistic integrity where you have to do something that's kind of your thing, that could really mess you up. And then again, when the audience fades away, you can't shift it and you're gonna lose a lot of audience. So think for example of companies that sell cars like Kia, Honda, uh, Toyota, Fiat, when you buy cars from these companies, you're not buying a car like, oh my god, this is a Fiat, or this is a Honda, it's, yeah, it's crazy. No, you just you buy the car because it's, you know, the, the most, che the cheapest, or maybe it has like some good features. You don't have any allegiance to the company itself, so the moment the trend shifts to another type of car, the moment, you know, the market changes, you don't care anymore. You just go to another car. 
um, another car company. Now, this is not the case with companies like Tesla, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, companies that sell, you know, usually premium cars. That, that is uh, true, but, but more, in, more deeply than that is that they sell something that's very unique where people who buy Tesla very often only buy Tesla or people who buy Ferraris are, you know, they really like Ferraris. Or imagine with Apple, how somebody who's an Apple fanboy, like me, <laughs> uh, self-admitted, uh, would only buy something that Apple made. So you can show me something or, or you'll be like, hey, it's, it looks like Apple, it runs like Apple, it's exactly like Apple, but it's not Apple. And just because I, I know that it's not Apple, I won't get it. Uh, even if it's cheaper, you know, whatever. And, and, and because you created, they created a market, their own market, they can sell stuff at premium prices. So they get more loyal followings, which allow them to not have to compete with other companies and competition lowers prices. So the same logic applies to videos where if you are, people love you because of you, that gives you a lot of social capital where people are much more willing to do stuff for you. So let's say you open up a Patreon account and you want people to pay monthly to, you know, get benefits from you. You don't need to do nearly as much to um, get people to do it because they'll do it just off of loving you, basically, rather than being like, you know, convince me to do it. Because Kia, I don't have any incentive to support it directly. I just want their car. But if it's a, a Mercedes, you also want to lift up Mercedes because you're not just buying the car, you're buying the brand. So when you're a creator and you make videos and you make specifically your videos, um, that means that you're special. So people are referring to you rather than the niche. So you can take as an example reaction channels where although there are ton of reaction channels, like tens of thousands of them, uh, where some are really successful, some are very successful, you know, a lot of are somewhat successful, um, and again, many are not successful at all, you get channels like H3H3, which are reaction channels, but they're creators. So 99% of what they do is completely artistic and creative, and people, no matter what happens to the whole niche of creation of, uh, of reaction videos, People are going to follow them no matter what, no matter where they go, no matter what they change. For example, now they have podcasts, uh, which is a completely different niche. Uh, so they run a podcast show instead of reacting to videos. And they have, I think, about 25-30% migration where people not only watch this one, but also watch this type of content, which just goes to show you how powerful it is when you're a creator. Again, you don't have to be a creator. A follower has many advantages as well. This is a creator. So this brings us to the biggest advantage of being a creator, which is that, again, you anchor yourself as that person where people love you for you and not just for the trend that you're following. When you create something uh, just for the sake of creating it, uh, people will love you very much because it's you put your soul into it it's it's you it's not something that you just found that happens to be good but even there there's a big risk there's a big tension that starts because once people start demanding your creations it's very likely that they'll want to see some specific type of creation that really gets them going and it's really tempting to just you know go with the market and follow whatever the whims of other people are. So you started off being artistic, and then you found out people love especially one type of creation that you did, and then that completely destroys you because now you're confining yourself into doing that specific thing. Uh, for example, uh, I think uh, Edgar Allan Poe, the guy who made Poo, Winnie the Pooh, he was an, uh, he wrote uh, romantic novels. So really deep dramas and none of them really took off and then when he made Winnie the Pooh that really took off obviously because everybody knows Winnie the Pooh and he would not 
go back to it. So he would not go back to writing that kind of content. He wanted to go back to writing dramas and everybody hated him for it. So people hated him for not going with, with what the people wanted and he hated himself for never seeing that success with his own stuff. So the only thing that he did where it was like, okay, a one-off thing, that was successful, but his main passion was not. So again, everything has a, a risk with it, okay? It's like when you have a sick puppy, um, again, you've got a puppy, it's like, oh, it's so cute, I love it, and that's why you got it as a toy, and then it gets sick, you need to take care of it, so you just put it, put it down, you know, you kill it, uh, because, well, I didn't sign up for this, I wanted this kind of thing, I'm getting this kind of thing. But in terms of disadvantages, uh, as a creator, you constantly risk uh, being copied by other people, being taken advantage of, and ultimately just failing because you're not able to create enough demand for whatever it is you want. So, for example, uh, the reactions channels I just talked about, um, they're dependent on extracting value from other creators who, who, who created things, you know, that people value. So a, a channel that does reaction videos will not do a reaction video about a video that nobody watched and took interest in because, again, they are dependent as followers on people liking reaction videos and on actually there being videos to react to, which, again, dependent on people being creators. It's just like the argument of a job versus the argument of being, you know, a businessman or an entrepreneur. When, you know, you can say, oh, it's the best to be a businessman. Okay, but if you don't have any employees, you can't hire anybody, you can't do anything. But if you don't have any, if there, if there are only employees, there are no businesses, that means nobody can make any money. So, again, it's, it's a balance between the two. Uh, but, but, but if you're a creator, people will use your creations to, to get, gain value off it. So you need to know how to use that. Uh, again, the other disadvantage is people uh, trying to put you down, uh, basically create value for, for themselves, not by extracting value and kind of sharing stuff, but by putting you down. Uh, let's say you talk about something, this is me, this is my opinion, this is what I think. There are a lot of negative people who will use this uh, content to put you down, to make you look bad, uh, to criticize you because that's what makes them feel good. That's what um, that that's the way they grow their stuff. Uh, so again, you run the risk of not just being one of the group, but actually isolating yourself where people uh, don't like you. Uh, you know, you can actually create the wrong thing. You can create something that nobody likes, and people are going to be angry at you for it um, because you don't have specific guidelines because you use your creativity. Um, you don't have that security of knowing what's popular already. Now, the other thing it means is that you need to sell yourself. So because there's no demand, or maybe the demand is not explicit, you need to find either the hidden demand that people haven't found yet, or you need to create demand from nothing. So you need to convince people why your ideas are the best, why what you're talking about is the most important or the most entertaining. So a big dependency here is on salesmanship and being in the right place in the right time. So if you're trying to create something where there's no demand at the moment, dude, you're on your own. Like you're entirely dependent on your salesmanship skills, on your ability to inspire people and to generate enthusiasm about something. Uh, which many people did that and created huge markets just by themselves, um, sometimes um, solidifying themselves as the leaders, and sometimes, unfortunately, people saw the trend that these people were creating, and now you, you get your trend stolen by somebody else who becomes bigger. So, again, there's always risk in life, no matter if you choose the risky option or the safe option. So, in conclusion... Instead of me saying, okay, you need to make this kind of video or you need to make this kind of video, what I recommend is that you think uh, which type of person do you fit? Uh, where, like how much are you this kind of person and how much do, are you this kind of person? Because it's not a dichotomy. It's not either this or that. It's, it's a combination. It's like I'm 80% creative and I'm 20% a follower. So a, hundred, a person who's 100% creative 
is somebody like uh, like Jesus. You know, it's like, I have this idea. This is how I want the world to work. I don't care if I get crucified for it. I don't care what happens. I don't care if the whole world is against me. This is me. This is my idea. Where somebody who's a complete follower is like, no, I'll only do it if it's something that I know will work. It's the safest route. It's the most profitable way I can make money. Or in other words, you make these weird uh, Elsa, Spider-Man videos that go crazy on YouTube right now. Or you're making you know, reaction channels where you literally just find the, the best of the best of the best. And the only thing you'll do is, is something that you know will guarantee to get at least a thousand views just because there's so much uh, demand behind it. Now, people who are mostly creators... They tend to be very artistic, very creative. They have a high level of conscientiousness, which means that they will not be able to live with themselves if they don't feel like they're doing the right thing and following their passion. Uh, so my, I'm highly conscientious. I, can, I, in my case, cannot do something where I don't feel like I'm doing the right thing at that moment. So I'm never able to be kind of like the follower. That's why I'm like 80% a creator. Uh, also, creators are... Um, they have a really high capacity for taking risks and dealing with uncertainty because again, when you're not following the herd, when you don't go off the beaten path, when you don't go on the beaten path, you have no idea what's coming. You don't have no idea if it's going to be amazing, if it's going to be awful, if it's super dangerous, if it's super profitable. So you have to have a really high tolerance for that. Now, people who are mostly followers, they tend to be very calculated and opportunistic. So they like to find opportunities and they like to take advantage of them. So instead of creating an opportunity, they like to find opportunities. Uh, they're usually a lot less artistic and, or at least a lot more orderly and less concerned with artistic freedom. So maybe they can be somewhat artistic, but, but not like this has to be my way or the highway. You know, I can find a place to be artistic in this uh, frame. Uh, they're also very much inclined towards order and structure and having a low capacity for risk. So you can pretty much sum it up by calling it a person who's opportunistic, but likes the beaten, proven path. So instead of jumping forward and asking yourself, am I, you know, should I do this kind of video or this kind of video, I recommend that you sit down and ask yourself, which person are you mostly relating to right now? Like which archetype between these two? Uh, like I'm 80% this, 20% that, and I'm 50-50, I'm only this, only that. And based on uh, where you identify yourself, you'll immediately know what's the best decision for you. So if you are um, a creator type, uh, by the way, this is again, not about efficiency. So I think most, both of them are effective uh, depending on what you most relate to. So they both have their virtues and their disadvantages. Uh, this is about which one can you live with yourself by doing. So most people, are followers and they cannot live with themselves uh, being mostly creators and people who are mostly creators cannot live with themselves doing anything else. So if you came to the conclusion that you are a creator then that means that you should immediately just start where you are and ask yourself what's important to you and make a video about it and, or if it's a business start the business about it and if you are a follower then you should start researching trends and finding either extremely specific uh, niches or extremely general, again, depending on how artistic you are, and, um, and, and start through that path. So both of them, uh, again, offer really good solutions, either going really creative or going really based on opportunity that's already there and trends and markets. Identify yourself, find out which one you most relate with, and that's where you're going to start which again for me 80% creative so I don't really want to look at too much on other stuff I do that a bit and that's today's video so if it's uh, helpful for you please uh, you know like it share it with other people and uh, if you're unsubscribed yet please subscribe lots of more cool stuff coming up thanks for watching see you tomorrow